With so many valley residents embracing conservation, more landscapes than ever are water efficient. And while water smart landscapes are definitely low maintenance, that doesn't mean no maintenance. Let's take a look at how to keep your landscape thriving as it hits the 5, 10, or even 20 year mark. Since 1999, Southern Nevadans have converted 183 million square feet of thirsty grass to water efficient landscaping that looks great and uses far less water. And through the SNWA's Water Smart Landscapes rebate program, they've earned up to $2 for each square foot. But a new landscape that often begins with one gallon plants, 15 gallon trees, and a small but capable drip system quickly matures. After all, water smart plants are right at home in our desert, so they thrive quickly. In a few years, you might be reassessing some landscape area needs, and after eight to 10 years, a mature water smart landscape might need some extra attention to take it into its second decade. It's no surprise drip systems are at the top of that list. A big part of assessing an older landscape and what to do with it is the drip system. They do develop issues over the years and it's a matter of looking at what you've got, running the system, and sometimes it's really obvious that you need to do something. In this case, this is an inline drip irrigation system that was installed probably about a decade ago. It did really well for the tree at first and an inline system by the way has the emitters built into the tubing. When it was first planted this emitter was added to get water directly to the root system but this was superfluous over time could have been removed. But now as the tree's growing it's actually lifted this tubing up out of the ground. Now what are you going to do about this? Well a big part of it is assessing the tree itself. Does the tree need that much water? In this case, this is a Palo Verde, it's a desert species. It actually does better, grows slower, is stronger with less water. So in this case, we can't tell at this point where this tubing attaches. It should be completely removed and capped, but in order to do that, a little bit of excavation needs to go on so you can see where that tubing is attached. And if you can just cap it at both ends and just eliminate this portion of the water. There's other plants in the landscape around this tree, and this tree can get the water that it needs because over these 10 years or so, it has developed its roots out and it's picking up that water from the surrounding plant material. In addition to evaluating your aging drip system, you should assess the overall health and needs of your trees. An important part of tree care is assessing the tree for its current state of health. And a big part of tree care oftentimes is staking and guying, which typically happens with younger trees when they're first planted to make sure that they are solid in the ground. Now staking, those stakes, shouldn't be left up against the trunk. They should be out away from the trunk and the tree tied to it. In the case of this Palo Verde, years ago, it actually took a bit of a lean. Somebody came in, they tied it and they put a stake in the ground and they used this cable to pull it upright. Now, if you do have a tree that is staked or guyed, any sort of tie material, you should check that at least once a year. And this is why. Because in this case, this cable was left on too long. If it still needed it, that cable should have been readjusted or repositioned. But over time, the tree can grow around it and encapsulate it into the wood. In fact, on this side, you can see the same thing. However, in this case, it, they pulled it out in time so that cable's not inside. Now, this will weaken the trunk, but the trunk is also reacting. This is called reaction wood. You can see the swell of tissue here and here. It's on the backside as well. So both of these trunks should over time be able to completely cover over that bend or cover over that cable, and they should be fine. But it's really important that you do assess the staking and guying of any tree at least once a year to avoid this kind of problem. As mature plants age out or fail, a bit of planning can increase the success of your replanting efforts. Plants have limited lifespans. Some do better, some do worse. So in this case, we had a euonymus hedge all through this whole area. Euonymus is a plant that was planted in Southern Nevada a lot, especially during the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Now, this is a big plant. It can grow to 10 or 15 feet or more. And here it is in a narrow walkway that requires constant pruning and it's starting to get sparser and woodier so this might be approaching the end of its life anyways if you're thinking so the ones that were over here 
died out completely. And now that you're in this position where you're going to think, am I going to plant here? It's a good time to assess the other plants. And part of the reason to take this out is it's going to require a lot of care. It's not in great health and it's a big bulky plant. And if you take it out, you can then plant this entire area with one kind of unified theme. A terrific resource is the free plant search tool on snwa.com. You can research plants by size, color, sun or shade needs, and much more. You also might learn what not to plant. Over time, some plants tend to take over. In assessing your landscape, you want to think about plants that are doing well and maybe have outlived their purpose or outgrown their space. So here we have a Banks rose. It'll bloom heavily in the spring. It's a very aggressive plant. It grows to like 15 or 20 feet. And it's trained up on this arbor and overhead. Well, in this case, you could either replace the plant with something less aggressive because this is going to take a lot of maintenance every year or if you want to keep the plant, you can see up here it's gotten really woody. You still have the green tissue, but there's a lot of woody stuff that's not real attractive. So there's a type of pruning called radical rejuvenation pruning. And basically what that is, is coming in here and taking it down to live wood, right? Or, or just cutting this live wood back. And the time to do it is early in the spring, right before that push of growth. So probably February would be a really good month. Now, in the process, you would cut up here, it would flush out, and it could be retrained with nice, fresh, new wood here. It probably should be done every three to five years. And then also, all this dead material gets taken off and there's dead in here as well that you can remove. And if you're not sure if it's dead or not, there's a simple little test. You just scratch it. If it's brown like that, that's dead wood. But if it's live wood, I'll just go real careful, a little bit in there and I can see green tissue. So radical rejuvenation pruning is radical and there is some risk to it. But I think a Banks rose and a lot of other vining plants can take a hard pruning and then come right back. And remember, plants, like people, have a lifespan. Sometimes a plant will stop thriving simply because it's at the end of its life cycle, not because you haven't done enough. So here we have an old Angelita daisy that's been here 10 or 15 years, and it has seen better days. If you're thinking about changes to your yard, what are you going to do with a plant like this? Well, two options. One, cut it back really hard and see if it comes back. Now what can happen is a bunch of debris can build up at the base of a plant and you can see, just look at, it's all the way down about six, six inches and that can suffocate the plant. If you cut this back hard, take all that debris out of there, it could just flush back out and it might do really, really well. Then if it doesn't, you can replace it. Some plants I do know have fairly limited lifespans, many of the ornamental grasses. So back here behind the boulder, we have an old, uh, I believe it was a regal mist, and you can see she's just done for. So here in every disaster, there's that opportunity for improvement. And here it's just a matter of planting. You could plant another ornamental grass here. You could do another regal mist. A bull grass is really beautiful flowers, or you could change it out entirely. Um, when it's done, it's done. When it's on its way out, you can make an attempt to rejuvenate the plant. But here's the thing, cool weather is a great time to plant, up in through March, even April. And these desert plants can take a lot of heat. So if you do decide to make the change, just oversize the hole a little bit, grow it, uh, dig it about two to three times the width of the container, but no deeper. Do a little bit of soil amendment, especially if it's more of a moderate water use or higher water use plant. But one of the nice thing about the desert plants, they like our poor soils, no amendment necessary. When young seedlings become trees two stories high, or when mature plants attract hummingbirds daily, you know how much a water smart landscape adds life. And with some smart decisions as your landscape matures, you're sure to enjoy its colorful beauty for years to come. Reporting for Waterways, I'm Christine Vaughn.